Thanks everyone for joining us. This is actually the third event, uh, the second event, sorry, I'm already getting lost. The second event in this workshop series that we're doing. Uh, if you don't know me, I'm Jan, I'm the RevOps community manager here at HubSpot. My pronouns are he, him. I'm a white male wearing glasses. And as you, uh, yeah, I'm wearing also a gray sweater. Uh, I'm really excited because this is the second installment of this workshop that we're calling like Power Up Sales Hub uh, with Operations Hub. Uh, we're doing five of these events. Last time, the, I think two weeks ago, we did the one on Marketing Hub. Next one will be on Service Hub, and that will be on April 21st, if I uh, recall correctly. Uh, and these are really great. We get people like Connor here uh, of Aptitude 8, which is an elite solutions agency at HubSpot. Uh, and he's he just he's a know-it-all when it comes to operations up. And I say that with uh, the most uh, in po positive ways <laughs> in a positive way and we also have jack goldrick who's our uh well he, you actually changed jobs right jack so i'm not sure how to uh how to <laughs> refer to you at this point i kind of forgot <laughs> it, it, it's funny you say that yeah I, i'm a sales specialist now so I, i'm still working pre-sale but i'm focusing solely on operations home and, and also our cms home uh, products um so yeah i just wanted to try something a little bit different and uh yeah, I moved into the role on, on Monday and, and really enjoying it. So I still actually just reminded me, I have to update my email signature. It still has my old <laughs> job title. So, uh, but I'm really happy to be here. And, and uh, my pronouns are he and him. Uh, and for anyone with a visual impairment, uh, I'm a white male. I have black hair, wearing a black hoodie. And um, my background is a fake HubSpot office. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I'm Connor. Uh, I My pronouns are also he, him. I'm white male. Uh, I have wavy brown hair and I wear glasses uh, and I usually just say uh, imagine a more American and slightly chubbier uh, Jan and uh, you get close uh, but uh, we're really excited for everyone to be here today uh, I am uh, the CEO of Aptitude today Jan touched on a little bit we're an elite partner um, we do tons of work on Operation Sub and HubSpot and CMS and everything else under the sun and so we're really excited for uh, this whole event and sharing with you guys some of the stuff that we've built some really awesome ways that you can be using Operations Hub uh, and how you can tap into it for some of your different use cases. Um, so I will sort of touch through, we're going to, this will be three parts. So if you've, if you've come to any of our other workshops, uh, you'll be ultra familiar with this. If this is your first one, uh, then here's our typical format. So first we'll do a very brief overview on Operations Hub and, and what it is and why it's awesome. Uh, we won't go as deep as we've gone in the past, um, but then we'll get into some operations use cases that Jack and I have pre-prepared. We'll talk through some conceptually. Jack will do some really awesome demos of actual code in HubSpot and talk through how it works, why it works, and how you guys can use it to benefit some of the things you might be working on. Um, the goal of those use cases is to generally get your juices flowing and to think through some things that you might want to solve for. Um, and so if you have either projects you're working on, can I use Operations Hub to solve this particular problem? Or here's something I'm trying to do, uh, throw that into the Q&A uh, and we will answer all of those at the tail end of this. So typically the first half of this is gonna be uh, about 20, 30 minutes. And then we'll use the back half of our time together to talk through your use cases, your examples. So please throw them in the Q&A and we would love to talk through uh, projects you guys are actually working on. Uh, and see if Jack and I can help point you in the right direction. So uh, let's go ahead and, and jump into why, why sales and operations hub. So if you are a sales hub user, uh, why is operations hub awesome and powerful and extends what you can do? And so when I sort of explain what is operations hub, why is it really powerful for what you're doing? Um, operations hub kind of helps you do two things. Uh, one is it's going to extend the power of what sales hub is able to do for you. Um, you can automate anything that you might be struggling to do with standard out of the box, ultra powerful HubSpot tools and really take those to the next level. We'll talk through some really awesome examples of that uh, on both our side and Jack's. Um, you're also going to be able to extend HubSpot into other applications. So we're going to talk through data enrichment. You can use Operations Hub to connect Sales Hub to your systems, your uh, tools, an ERP, another uh, solution you might be using, perhaps an in-house database or an in-house application, and really extend the power of what's possible using Operations Hub. Um, so really, really awesome, powerful, powerful tool. Uh, and we'll talk through some really good use cases of, of how you guys can use that. Um, and of course, the primary goal for uh, when you work with any sort of operations function and sort of that revenue operations, and this is that classic HubSpot flywheel with the rev revenue operations between 
uh, all of these go-to-market functions and your customer. But ultimately the end goal for Operations Hub and for leveraging the HubSpot platform is to break down silos between all of your teams, grow your business and make a really amazing customer experience. And so we're gonna talk through some really awesome ways that you can make that possible. So the first one that we're gonna talk through uh, is data enrichment. Um, so when we when we think about and talk about what is data enrichment, what does that mean? Um, how do we add more context, more information, more uh, details about records that come into our CRM? Uh, and HubSpot has some really amazing features to this out of the box with HubSpot Insights. Uh, however, there are tons and tons of products and tools out in the universe, either that are generic, could be specifically focused on a particular industry or a particular set of data that that will give you more information uh, about the prospects that you might be wanting to work with. So whether those are folks that are in your system that are cold or perhaps warm leads coming in and filling out forms and you wanna make sure that you get them to the right person and route them in the right direction, Operations Hub is going to help you accomplish those things. Um, so with an example here, um, so this one is all on the uh, starter uh, element for Operations Hub, which lets you connect to uh, other systems and tools using the data sync functionality. So this example is Clearbit, uh, and there are a bunch of other uh, software products that will help you accomplish similar goals here. But what you're able to do is you can map your HubSpot properties into those data enrichment tools so that as records are coming into your system, you are adding additional context with things like their company size and their industry. And so you you can use that information to route records to the correct uh, rep or the correct associate, perhaps automatic, automate uh, marking things as qualified or disqualified and sort of prioritizing those leads as they come into uh, your organization and into your system. Uh, and you can do this with Operations Hub and you can extend this even to additional custom fields. So we see customers who really focus on either industry or maybe they're a specific tool set or tech stack that that customer is using um, to validate that they might be looking for a particular service line or a particular product that you might sell. Um, so some Something that you can configure does not require any coding knowledge uh, or anything overly technical to set this up. Um, and you can explore. There are tons and tons of data connections. Uh, I'll rely on Jan to give us the link to all of them, but they also show in the uh, app marketplaces built by HubSpot. Uh, and you can connect to lots of other platforms to sort of add context and add information onto your CRM records. Um, to take that one step further, uh, the best part is this isn't just a one point connection. So you can connect uh, HubSpot to lots of other tools and multiple data enrichment functions. So this is an example that's showing sort of that, that clear bit information, maybe taking into some page view data, using some company insights, or perhaps some Salesforce data that you're syncing in if you're using Salesforce on the CRM side as well. Uh, and you can start to add a lot of context to all of these records and enrich them across multiple different data enrichment platforms. So we see this as being hyper uh, useful when we see customers who maybe are trying to do some enrichment from something like a clear bit, maybe simplify down to uh, they only want to capture an email address from a form on their website, for instance, and then auto add everything else so they can optimize for conversions. Uh, but then perhaps adding additional data from industry specific uh, data sets or uh, some data enrichment providers that focus on something that sort of Clearbit or HubSpot Insights might not be able to support. Uh, you're not limited to any one of those providers. You can work with a whole bunch of different ways to add a lot of that information. Um, so we're gonna jump from this basic example into something a little more complex, uh, which is how to manage recurring revenue. And we're gonna talk through using coded actions and how you can extend HubSpot and manage this in really awesome ways. So I'm gonna pass it over to Jack uh, and let him talk through uh, how to do this. Um, uh, brilliant, thanks, Connor. Um, so yeah, I, I suppose like I, I've, I've worked some context, I've worked post-sale in HubSpot for two and a half years. I have a lot of hands-on experience actually implementing the tool and integrating with the tool. And I've seen all the weird and wonderful ways that people want to use it. Um, and I suppose that's the reason I've kind of gravitated towards Operations Hub since it was launched uh, uh, in, in April of last year is because it opens up the, the, the possibility to so many ways in which you can uh, I suppose, increase the, 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 the power of the hubs uh, and the default functional, functionality that they provide. So one way that I've, I guess, been exploring and have spoken to people about is managing recurring revenue. Um, this is a very common thing that we see uh, with, with customers, especially those that maybe operate in the SaaS space, much like HubSpot would, that have you know, monthly uh, subscriptions or you know, monthly payments that are being processed. And um, yeah, I wanted to walk through uh, an example of how you may choose to do that. So what I'll do is I'll share my screen and I will basically run through everything from start to finish. Uh, so in a moment, 
we should hopefully see uh, HubSpot appearing here on the, the screen. And I will be zooming in, apologies if it's hard to see. Uh, I'm on quite a, a wide screen here. Um, but what we're looking at here is a list of deals in the HubSpot system. Uh, and you'll notice uh, that each deal, we've got deal name. You can see that they're, they're, na they're, they're named uh, based on the months in which they fall under. So we have one here for Burger King. Um, <laughs> very, uh, gets very hard to kind of come up with company names. So I've got a lot of <laughs> big major brands in my system. Um, we've got Burger King here and you see that there's a deal for each month. They're on a six month or a seven month contract rather. Um, and you can see here, uh, we have got a different date for, for each of those, those uh, for, for each month that they have a contract with us. Uh, we've got the revenue we're expecting for that given month in the company, of course. And the same goes for, we have Marvel here. I'm a big Avengers fan. We've got Marvel. Uh, we've got several deals. I think they've got a, a 12 month contract with us. Uh, I'm also a big rugby fan. <laughs> so we've got the Irish rugby, uh, the IRFU have taken out a plan with, with this fictional business. So the way this is working, if I navigate to the, the pipeline, uh, which is where we would really manage our deals is let's imagine I created a, um, a deal here and it's uh, a new deal. And we're going to be, in this case, we're selling to HubSpot. So I don't know, it's going to be $650 a, a, a month. Uh, and we're going to attach HubSpot to this deal. Okay. Uh, and I click uh, create. Now, at this point in time, obviously I'll have that sales force, uh, that sales process, that back and that forth. Um, but what I can also do is if I drag it here into the closed one stage, so when it's ready to be closed one, it's prompting me for a contract link. Now we can also change the, the variables we ask for here. I've kind of kept this a little bit uh, simple just for the purposes of this, but let's say it's a, a three month contract and I click save. Now, what happens behind the scenes here, and this is where we get into the operations component of, of, of the solution, is that we have a workflow and let me close that down. Postbot workflows are ways of automating processes. Uh, and you can see here what we've done is we've created a workflow that's listening in the CRM for any deal that has a contract link that I've specified and that has been moved into a closed one state in this particular pipeline. Uh, and what I've then done is I've used a custom coded action to carry out some uh, bespoke or more advanced logic to basically replicate a deal for each month of the contract. Now, uh, I can certainly share all of this uh, uh, with anyone. I think it'll be included in the follow-up anyway, but there, there's a bit of code that makes this happen. Um, I'm not going to go through it line for line, but essentially what I'm doing in here is that I'm looking at that original deal that I closed. Uh, and then what I'm doing is I'm actually uh, looking at the contract length and I'm creating X number of deals off the back of that. Uh, and I'm creating them in that respective pipeline. So what we should see if we navigate back to this uh, pipeline here, as you can see that new deal for HubSpot, if I refresh the screen, we should see, uh, yeah, you'll see that we've got uh, the original deal and we've got our, our, our different months that the, the, the contract is going to, to carry on for. Now, this is great because obviously it allows us to manage that, but what's more is I could actually create a dashboard to break this data down in more detail. Uh, and this again is where the, the operations hub does a small component here and that it's the custom coded action that's facilitating the logic to, to create these deals and, 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 and I suppose modify the pipeline accordingly, but it's then using the pre-built out of the box tools to create these insightful reports. Uh, now, admittedly, my data is a little bit light. I've only got a few deals in that pipeline, but just to give you a flavor of what's possible, you see, I've got a few different reports here. I could create a, a breakdown of revenue month on month. So you'll see here on the, the Y axis, I've got the, the total amount of that revenue. Uh, you can see here on the, the, uh, the x-axis, I've got the, the, the dates. Uh, and what we're also looking at then is uh, we've got a goal. So maybe I have a goal. I want to have $2,000 worth of recurring revenue every month. So I can see how we're tracking. We can actually see, uh, I think this is in um, October, uh, November. We're kind of dangerously close to that, that kind of uh, threshold. Um, and then obviously from November onwards, we're actually performing below target. So we need to, you know, we need to plan ahead and we need to maybe increase the pipeline there. So again, this is just an example, but hopefully giving you a taste of what's possible. And what you can even do is you can add an extra dimension to this type of data. So this next report, it's actually the exact same thing, but you'll notice that the different colors uh, on, the, on the, the different columns. And what we're looking at here now is the recurring revenue by the company month on month. So I can very easily see that uh, the IRFU, the Irish Rugby uh, uh, Association, 
are, are going to be a customer of ours up until um, you know just before October, let's say. Um, we can also see that Marvel uh, have a contract with us moving forward right up until February of 2023. So I, I suppose something like this then allows us to see a little bit more clearer as to the companies that 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 we're obtaining that revenue from, uh, and then purely just for. Uh, uh, aesthetics, I created another one that is somewhat similar. It, it's just a, 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 a graph showing the, the revenue by, by, by company and we can see dips and that type of thing. So again, it's more aesthetics and visuals as to how you want to report on this. But I just wanted to show you that whilst the custom code is, is I suppose, handling the heavy lifting, it's then building these dashboards off the back of that that makes it so powerful. And this is, of course, just an example. Um, I, I try to make them as when I, when I put these together, I try to make them as generic as possible so that people can kind of build on top of them and, and, and you know, get some inspiration as to how it can be improved. Um, but, you know, some ways you could think of this as well is, you know, what if we have variable recurring revenue as opposed to fixed recurring revenue, which is the way I've approached this? Well, if that's the case, we could navigate back to our coded snippet. Uh, and you can see down here, um, the logic here where I'm creating new deals and passing an amount in, I could create some additional logic to calculate discounts or percentages. Uh, so there's a lot of possibilities here that custom coded automation presents us with, but at the end of the day, as an end user, I am able to leverage that data and report on it and, and manage a sales process. So I just wanted to show this because it is something that comes up quite frequently. And um, yeah, I, I think it's a nice kind of uh, uh, bridge between the sales and the operations hubs that we provide. To extend some of that as well, Jack, we've seen uh, similar use cases and actually applying this so that if you are, whether you're encountering churn or sort of customer loss or anything in that effect, that you could go and automatically go and update all of those deals. And to your point, the, the power of that is because all this data is in HubSpot. And when you build those reporting uh, functionality on top, you can then reflect that in some of your forecasting and your dashboarding. And I think one of the things that we have conversations about all of the time uh, are how can I manage a bunch of this forecasting and, and how can I get a handle on this? And Operations Hub really unlocks tremendous opportunity and power there for you to sort of extend uh, your ability to manage all of that data. Uh, absolutely. And, and, and one thing I would say as well is um, operations hub is different uh, tiers, just like our other hubs. So you've got your starter, your pro, and your enterprise. Um, starter would primarily be around data sync. So getting, you know, solving the problem of data silos and getting data into HubSpot as a central location so that your teams can work off of the same uh, data set. Uh, professional then kind of introduces that automation, that data validation component. Um, and then enterprise introduces what we call data sets, which is a way of, uh, which really sort of extends into the reporting tools, um, which allows you then to uh, perform calculations and group data into cohorts and, you know, make it much easier for your end users to, to build and work with reports. So there's so much ways that you can use it. Um, and uh, to be, I, I work with operations of every single day and I'm continually learning about new unique ways that it can extend the, the functionality of our, 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 our existing hubs. Um, and that's, I guess, what makes my job so exciting and interesting. <laughs> Sweet. Uh, right. Well, let's jump out to our next example uh, and then start throwing stuff in the Q&A. Uh, if, if you're interested in either something similar to this or, or how to manage some of this data, uh, we'll talk through a bunch of those examples here uh, momentarily. So the next one I'm going to talk through uh, conceptually uh, and sort of paint a picture for some of this that we run into all the time is what we call advanced lead assignment. So when we think about that, HubSpot has really amazingly powerful out of the box lead assignment tools, whether uh, you're setting a specific rep or you're doing round robin or you're doing round robin across a team. Uh, but sometimes we run into requirements and requests that have a little bit more complexity, a little bit more nuance than we're able to achieve with sort of out of the box functionality. So for a couple of those examples, um, we're going to go through. So one of them is uh, managing and assigning some of those off of geographic territory. So especially when you have lots and lots of territories or territories are shifting and changing, or maybe the granularity is a little bit bigger than just a state match. Uh, we'll talk through how to do some of those. Um, another area where we run into this is uh, having routing rules that maybe have uh, some exceptions or nuance where you maybe have reps that are managing specific states, unless something has a specific account name and you're trying to sort of manage to 
some of the use, those use cases, um, or uh, out of the office or PTO. We see a lot of examples where, especially for inbound sales teams, leads are coming in and what uh, our customers are wanting to do is be able to skip over the standard lead owner and have kind of a backup or reroute in the event that somebody is out of the office or unavailable uh, for a particular moment in time. So we're going to go through each of these and kind of how and what you would do to uh, manage these. Um, and so for our first one, um, we jump forward, I think one or two here. Um, for our automated territory management. Um, and so in this example, uh, what we're actually seeing is being able to come in and, and set really complex territory logic in that custom coded action. And so when you predefine what that is, or if you're storing some of those territories in another database, you can run that coded action when a deal is created. So this, this example is this workflow is being powered by deal owner is unknown. Uh, and we're, what we're gonna be able to do is then go and look up across all of those territories and logic to be able to figure out who should handle and who should tackle this deal. Um, you can take this same concept and the same use case. We're going to go through sort of where they apply, but whether you're using it on contacts and you have sort of inbound form fills or inbound leads, or maybe on the service side as well, where you might have tickets uh, coming in or any other object that might be coming into HubSpot. Um, so one example here is assigning some of those based off of uh, the IP address of the submitted record. So something we see a lot is we know on the contact record, uh, perhaps the IP address that comes through uh, on those HubSpot insights when that record is created. Um, but we then have it associated to the deal. And when the deal's coming in, we wanna be able to know, okay, where is that person located so that we can connect them and assign them to the best rep to handle that particular request. And so what we can do here is run that coded action, fetch the contacts associated to that deal. You could also filter that down if you're using flexible associations or some mechanism of flagging which, which record you want to prioritize. Uh, you can then grab the IP address of that particular form fill or that person who came through, uh, and then you can route it to the rep that should be handling that specific uh, region or territory. And so we've done this with really complex, long lists where perhaps we have uh, really small regions, whether it's a cluster of zip codes or something that's sort of a, a territory or a time zone. Uh, and you can store those in sort of a hub DB table or sort of another table and make it easy for a sales manager to go and update and say, I no longer want Jack to manage the, the Southwest. I want Jan to manage the Southwest. And so that'll keep firing on your coded action. So it's easy for someone to go and change as opposed to going and looking at a workflow and trying to update a whole bunch of different nodes and if thens and logic to try to maintain and manage it, uh, which I think is another good example of what Jack touched on, which is that the, the best part of Operations Hub is that it flows seamlessly into all of the functionality that's in HubSpot uh, outside of that. And so you can extend a lot of what you're able to do. Um, another example, we run into this a lot for local service businesses. So we see this um, for uh, HVAC, uh, electric, electrical, plumbing, anything that involves sort of some on-site technician, uh, whether from a, a B2C or a B2B type of organization. Um, and so this example actually lets you go and fetch from the Google Maps API and you can grab what's the closest uh, distributor or the closest franchise or the closest uh, individual location to this particular request. Um, and so by hitting the Google Maps API, we can feed in sort of a service address as an example. Um, and then we can ping Google Maps and we can say, okay, from a maps endpoint and from stores that we have, who's the closest technician? Who's the closest franchise? Where should we be routing this lead in this record? So really, really awesome way to extend kind of geolocation. Um, if you're using fenced areas as well, uh, we've used this similarly for automatically sending emails to customers and saying, hey, we actually don't support your region at this time. We've added you to a wait list. We'll reach out to you when that region is supported. Uh, and that's something that we've done for some folks that maybe are expanding and, and want to manage their marketing efforts. And they were spending tons and tons of inbound sort of sales time saying, oh, wait, we can't service this person because they're outside of our region. Uh, you can automate that whole flow uh, using Operations Hub by just flagging whether or not uh, they're sort of in a region that you might be able to serve. Um, for our next example, uh, we're going to talk about PTO. Uh, so super similar concept. Um, we've done this whether uh, we've done this with some different HRIS systems. Um, so effectively, the way that this works out is we build a workflow. So the workflow runs whenever uh, a new demo request or a contact us comes in on the website. And then what we want to be able to do is say, okay, we assigned this to Jack, but 
what happens if Jack is out sick or Jack is on vacation? And now we have to go and update and, and manually uh, go and, and manage a whole bunch of different workflows or sort of say, oh, wait, no, if it's Jack, route it to Jan and, and try to build that in. Um, with this flow, what we can do is we can actually have a coded action that can go and grab information uh, about that PTO and a PTO data to know, is Jack able to handle this particular uh, record? And so we've done that with either going and, and requesting PTO information from an HR RAS system, uh, totally dependent on, on how and where you store your PTO information, um, or a Google Calendar. We have customers that sort of have created a Google Calendar, and uh, if a rep is out of the office, they'll sort of add an event to that Google Calendar for sort of their PTO piece. And we can go and search for that PTO calendar and say, does Jack have an event that's associated with this PTO calendar today? If so, uh, assign this to somebody else instead. Um, and so really, really awesome way. We see this a lot with large organizations that have tons of operations overhead and they might be swapping out. And I think another really good example of how Operations Hub can sort of help you scale up some of what you're able to do with out-of-the-box tools uh, and be able to apply that at really large organizational levels. And you can use kind of the same concept um, for any sort of trigger logic or, or rerouting that you may have exceptions to, and you store those exceptions somewhere outside of, uh, of HubSpot itself. Um, so all of those are examples of, of how Operations Hub can help you manage complex lead routing uh, exercises. Um, what we're going to do now is jump into some of our Q&A and questions. So if there are things that you guys are trying to build, if there's questions about this use case, uh, Jack and I'll talk through them and sort of live, live answer, live demo, and, and try to give you guys uh, clarity on, on how to build some of what you guys are trying to do. And, and maybe maybe at, 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 at that juncture, um, Connor, there was two questions that came up that maybe I, I could take straight off the bat. Uh, and if I could share my screen again, that would be much appreciated Yeah, uh, because they're very valid questions. Uh, I'd love to, 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 to go into more detail on them. Um, so somebody first asked, uh, could, you, could you potentially forecast by product in terms of recurring revenue? And the short answer there is yes, you could. Uh, and I, I wanted to just share my screen and, and give, uh, give an overview of what that might look like. So you'll, you'll notice here, uh, if we navigate into my, my deals that I've created, um, Let's just take maybe one of these deals. Uh, if I look for, um, you know, Marvel, one of the deals that I have for the Marvel uh, company. Uh, yeah, this one here. You'll see that every deal that I create has a, um, or should have a, a product attached to it, um, if I've done this correctly. Uh, let's see. Yeah. So this particular deal is linked to product one, um, product two, three, whatever, X, Y, and Z. Now, what that, that would allow me to do here is I could navigate into the report builder and instead of breaking it down month by month using companies, for example, what I can do is I can change my data sources. So in this case, I'm reporting on deals and I'm not reporting on companies, though I could incorporate that. I'm actually looking at the, the line items attached to those specific deals. And what you end up with, and again, this is oversimplified because I just don't have the data, is a breakdown. Now you'll see in April, we have a breakdown of the different products we're selling. Truthfully, I haven't set it up so that it will copy products to the, the deals after, after the, the, the action executes, could easily do that and certainly will follow up with that. But this just gives you a taste of what that, that looks like. So we have that, that forecast in terms of revenue by product. What this code is doing with the standard workflow and truthfully, absolutely, Yes, you could. Um, however, it would take an awful lot of management. And, and I'm speaking from experience. That's why I, I actually jumped at the chance to put this together. Um, you could certainly do uh, what this is doing um, in, in, in the following way, but you'll, you'll see now how quickly things start to get a little bit crazy um, or a little bit out of control. So imagine I wanted to uh, create a, a, a workflow that looks at the contract length and it will create several records off the back of that. Um, oh, can you hear me okay, or have I been disconnected? You you were, and then it, it looks like you came back on my side. I thought it was uh, for me, but you're, uh, you're fully back now, I think. Uh, yeah, apologies. My whole internet there froze up. Um, where did I fall off? <laughs> I you I think it was just when you had said is is this could you build this recurring workflow uh, use or the recurring revenue workflow uh, with just a standard workflow action and anything gotcha. else you did was great so it's just the intro oh, okay. and that's what you're talking about uh, perfect so in, in that case yeah what I wanted to kind of show here is 
um, this is the issue you'll run into, but certainly want to be as transparent as possible. Um, so you'll see here, I could create a deal-based workflow and I could say, create deals for renewals or something like that, okay? And I click next. And just like my, my workflow we looked at, my enrollment criteria, I would say contract length is, is known. Uh, so there we go. I'd also say, and maybe the, the deal is in the, the closed one stage of the specific pipeline. Um, so closed one in that whatever recurring revenue pipeline, could choose any pipeline here. Um, now, the next thing is what we'd have to do then is we could have contract lengths of fluctuating lengths. You could have a two month contract, a three month contract, a 24 month contract, a 16 month contract, not to mention the variables in pricing. So the next problem you get into here, though it is entirely possible, is you basically have to then say, right, well, for deals that have a contract length that are maybe uh, less than or equal to, or sorry, rather, you'd have to do uh, equal to, uh, you'd have to be precise here. You'd have to say, you know, one. And you can kind of see here, we'd say contracts that are equal to maybe 12 or, or whatever, 12. And if we save that, you're going to end up with branches like this for each variation. Uh, and then what you'd need to do is you'd need to use the create record action to create a deal. So in this case, if it's going down branch one, we just need to create one deal. If it's going down branch two, we'd actually need to create 12 deals. We'd have 12 consecutive actions. Um, so that could get quite, depending on your sales process, of course, and your pricing structure, it's doable, but it could get, and from my experience with the given customer I was working with, it got very difficult to manage. Um, when you couple that with the fact that you then lose the impact of, uh, of modifying the data and, and, and more advanced logic within the code, whether it's you know, applying a discount or varying rates month on month, it just doesn't really, in my opinion, scale very well. Um, so absolutely can be done with standard actions if then branches and creating records, but I think you have to factor in the complexity of your sales process um, and also the amount of work it's gonna to take to actually manage and maintain it. Uh, so I just wanted to address those two because they were very good questions. Um, and, uh, yeah, wanted to be as transparent as possible. Yeah. I think, to, I think to further that one, Jack, I mean, we just ran into, uh, we'll give everybody some, some free, free best practice consulting beyond what, uh, Jack is talking about. We just ran into that exact same issue where we have a customer who wanted to, they may sell multiple products in one transaction and on one product, they want to discount for the first three months, but on the second product, they don't and trying to manage that and a deal workflow gets incredibly unwieldy. And then if anyone ever changes anything, it, it all sort of falls apart uh, and you now have to go and update all of those records. And so I think that coded action is a really good example of how you can sort of make your deal process of how your rep sell and how you configure and manage those uh, deals a lot easier. And then use some of the operations coded actions to then power all of that downstream reporting that you might need later. Um, and just because you, you, can solve for something with some of the, the standard workflows um, if you're trying to optimize what's best for some of your teams, uh, some a little bit better ways to do that. Um, question from uh, Grayson, which is, have you done live routing? So as example is uh, someone fills out a demo request form as a net new contact, uh, and then you auto show the correct HubSpot calendar. Um, so that type of a use case wouldn't necessarily be Operations Hub. Uh, the reason for that is, is Operations Hub happens in a workflow. And so a, a record has to get created. It has to get enrolled in a workflow. A bunch of other things have to happen. Um, you could theoretically use Operations Hub to do that and then send someone an email with the correct sort of rep calendar link. But if you're trying to do it all on that web flow, you should be able to do that on the CMS side though. So you should be able to take uh, sort of a form fill and an action and then use uh, on CMS Hub a uh, server list function, uh, which is super similar uh, to a coded action, uh, but would allow you to then um, build that logic into that demo request and then immediately direct somebody to uh, the right page that, that shows them what you want to show them. So whether that's a booking link or maybe it takes them to a specific product checkout page or sort of anything else off that first form, um, you can kind of power those types of flows uh, with CMS, uh, but it wouldn't necessarily be on the operation sub side, but, but certainly, certainly viable uh, with, with HubSpot for sure. Um, Jack, you're nodding a lot. I don't know if you had anything to add to that. If you're just like, yes. No, no. I, I, what I was going to say was speaking from my, my services days, uh, that, that has come up for me in the past as well. And I think you, you aced it, Connor, and what you said, um, you know, people have, there's all sorts of ways you could get, as you say, serverless functions and route to the appropriate page. Others have just embedded the different meeting links on, on, a, on the, the form page and on submission, you know, shown a pop-up with that. So, so it's doable entirely. It's just a question of how you want to do it. <laughs> For sure. Uh, 
anything else for other Q and A's for folks? Um, looks like one might've just come in the chat. The best way to, we'll, we'll try to look at the chat also guys, but if you do have things, the Q and A is, is easy for us because it lets us sort of take dibs on, on some of those. So question from uh, Craig in the chat. You're all good, Craig. I saw it. It's, it's no problem, uh, which is how can OBSHUB update uh, HubSpot objects when a change is made in a system outside of HubSpot? Uh, Excellent question. We run into this one all of the time. Um, so OpsHub is today is extremely powerful when a record is changing inside of HubSpot because we're able to then use that to trigger a workflow. Um, two ways that we've solved for something happens in another system. So uh, let's use the one that doesn't necessarily put dependencies on that system, which is we've done a scheduled action uh, inside of OpsHub. And so with OpsHub, you can schedule uh, an action to run uh, every day. Uh, and that action could go and fetch information from uh, another system. I think in, in one of our uh, workshops, we, we did a live example of this, but um, what you'd be able to do is go and fetch data from another system and update records. So we've done that. Uh, an example is uh, we had a customer where we did sort of an ERP connection and the sales process ran and then the the sort of production process had to happen in the ERP. And so after that deal is is one, uh, we would create that order in the ERP and the, the order sort of moving through some stages. And so every day we would run those deal actions through a workflow. We would go and fetch information from the ERP and say, has this been shipped yet? Has this been shipped yet? And then once it had been shipped, then we would update the deal stage so that the rep knew where it was at in its process and they could sort of communicate that to their customer or automate an email. So that's sort of one method you could do it. Um, we've also done really uh, complicated things with um, webhooks fired from other systems, um, though in order to receive those webhooks, we're typically putting those into serverless functions, um, which are on, on the CMS side. But to, more than happy to explore your particular use case further. Um, if you want to jump to the, the next slide, Caitlin, just if we do have um, other other things, if you want to reach out to either me or Jack directly, we'd be happy to. We're also reachable on, on LinkedIn, but we'd be happy to talk about that particular use case. Um, Jack, I don't know if you're looking in in the Q&A if you had one that you wanted to touch on, uh, but I can I can hand it to you or I can sort of scroll through. Uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, well, uh, I just saw chat asked ask a question around, does operations hub have anything exclusive to maybe, you know, or unique that would solve for calculating commissions for sales reps and that type of thing. Um, so I, I just sent a link there to chat to explore maybe data sets. I've used that to kind of look at, you know, if a product is in a certain category, perform a calculation, and that's ultimately the commission or something that we would be reporting on and we can create reports custom coded automation could be used for more advanced things. But tr truthfully as well, within our sales tools, uh, calculated fields um, more often than not can solve for that. So uh, I'd probably start there if I'm, if I'm being ultra honest with you. Um, uh, there's also deal split functionality built into the sales hub now as well, but operations hub certainly can take it a step further if needed. Uh, so yeah, um, just uh, that was the one I was looking at there. For sure. Uh, um, Question here for, is it possible using the operations hub to create a churn report? Um, I think we need a little bit more details. I think that the answer concretely is yes. Uh, do you do you need operations hub to manage that churn report? I'm not sure. Uh, so the example I was giving when, uh, let's assume that what, what Jack was sort of showing with the recurring revenue um, is you wanted to be able to see uh, what the... Um, what all of that deal forecasting would be for sort of each month of, of that revenue. Um, you could do this similar thing and we've done where perhaps a deal, uh, the original deal gets marked as churned or closed lost. And you could go and say, okay, go find every deal that's date is greater than today uh, and, and close that one out. And then you could use all that data set, whether you're, maybe it's just a specific deal stage is churned or it's a different pipeline, depends on how you kind of have it configured. Uh, but you could use that data in your churn reports to show, okay, well, what, how much revenue have we churned? When did we churn it? What's the downstream impacts and, and be able to aggregate and report on that particular data set. So uh, you, you may not need to do that at all. Uh, if you're just updating the deal to churn, depending on the way you look at it, um, you may just need to either have a churn stage or to have sort of a pipeline that reflects that. Um, we've done that in a whole bunch of different ways. Ways depending on on the use case. There, there's one there as well from from AJ, and um, I, this may have come in earlier, so I'm not sure when he uh, when they when they mentioned could this be done easier through what we're describing. I'm not sure if it was when we were chatting about the CMS or when it was when we were. I, chatting I'm, about I'm reading that as CMS uh, yeah. from the from the form side, but I'll let you take I, it. 
Yeah, so either way, I, I guess, um, certainly on CMS Enterprise, uh, uh, and the reason enterprise is required is it gives you access to serverless functions and that opens up a, a ton of potential because with serverless functions you can basically write code to execute logic that will dictate what happens on the front end of your website or where users end up so when a form is submitted you could certainly look at the timestamp that that submission has occurred upon and based on that you could you, you, you could you know perform another action um same could be done with a coded action on pro, but the, the problem is that happens off of the website, if that makes sense. So if, if, for example, you wanted to send a different type of communication to somebody after a form submission, you know, certainly a, a coded action could look at the, the time the form was submitted. And then if it was before noon or afternoon, you could send them down a, a different pathway. But yeah, on the CMS, it would be doable with serverless functions for sure. I'll do I'll do an additional uh, plug there only because uh, time in HubSpot today there there you can create a time property uh, via API but updating and managing those is a little hard. Um, we have an app it's it's an SLA tool called Timerman um, and it may it may be applicable to what you're describing it may not be um, but really good for sort of setting specific rules on times of day or when things are happening um, that is in the marketplace that you can check out uh, has a trial it may be helpful we 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 originally built it because. Uh, of some of the constraints around time. Um, Operations Hub helps us solve a lot of those, uh, but, but could be an answer um, for what you're looking for as well. Uh, let me jump back to the chat. Anything else in QA for folks? Otherwise, we can, we can uh, start to move towards wrapping up, but uh, we, have a, we have a little bit more time if anybody wants to, to ask anything else in the Q&A for either something you're trying to solve or, or how to tackle a specific problem or expanding on anything we've talked about. Cool. Uh, Jan, I can, I can pass it to you to start doing wrap ups. And if, if we get a really good one, uh, as you're going through it, then, uh, we can jump on it for sure. Yeah, sure. Uh, thanks. Thanks, Connor. Thanks, Jack. Uh, again, like a really amazing session, a lot of, a lot of examples, um, and, and things that I didn't know were possible. So, uh, I, I hope everyone here, uh, learned a ton. Um, and again, like I, I plug this in the in the chat, but if you're interested in learning more about Operations Hub or other ways to bring your automation to the next level, you can also always reach out to our, your HubSpot growth specialist or account manager or reach out to Aptitude 8. Um, we, we'd be happy to, to help you um, just bring everything to the next level and, and have you automate more and, and give, you, give your, your customers a better uh, experience overall. Um, but yeah, like I said at the beginning, this is the second workshop in this series. The next one is in two weeks, April 21st. We'll be discussing Service Hub uh, use cases that you can uplevel using Operations Hub. And uh, joining us again will be Connor Jeffers and Jack Goldrick. So uh, be sure to tune in if you want to learn more about it. I'll put the link in the chat again. Uh, if you want to sign up tomorrow, you will get the recording of this event as well as access to this, these slides. Um, and yeah, I think that's everything that I wanted to mention. Uh, Connor, Jack, anything you want to say before uh, we close off? Re reach out to me. More than happy to talk about your guys' use case. Uh, follow us on LinkedIn. Jack posts this amazing content. Uh, we put some stuff out occasionally as well. But if you're trying to solve different operations hub use cases, uh, we'd, we'd love to work with you. Um, we do a ton of that. And otherwise, I hope to see you on the next one. Um, and then, Jack, I can pass it to you if you want to say anything on your end. I think you're muted. Uh, I, I was just going to say uh, great, uh, great questions, uh, some really great engagement and uh, really enjoyed the session. So yeah, uh, feel free to connect and otherwise look forward to chatting to you all uh, in the next session. So thanks for- Can't for recommend following uh, Jack on LinkedIn enough. He has awesome operations of content and posts great stuff. So check him out. <laughs> thanks. Thanks for the shout out, Connor. Thanks everyone. I'll see you next time. Bye. Cheers. Bye-bye.